Hi there. Come right on in. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be here with you today. Grab yourself a cup of tea and join us. We're going to have a lot of girl talk today. My guest today is a lovely, lovely girl. Her name is Laura, Lori Gano, and she has written How He Loves Us. Uh, her story will really be very arresting to you. She is the founder of Out of the Ashes Ministries, and she ministers to women who have been hurt, tortured, abused, and that's a pretty hard group to convince that God loves them or that anyone loves them. And so she has written this book, How He Loves Us. It's a beautiful <clears throat> book, the way it's written, designed. You could use it probably in a Bible study or whatever, but really trying to get people to realize that God loves them. You know, I was raised in the church, and sometimes I have those feelings of, of how could God love me? I, I know, you know, I know I'm not perfect and all. And it's a very hard sell to the ladies that she ministers to. You're going to love her besides that. She's a general contractor. I'd like to see her on the job. That would be a lot of fun. And I'm going to join Stephanie. Uh, we're going to make uh, easy chicken piccata. And I confess, I tasted it. It is awesome. Next time I have company, I'm going to going to fix it. So we'll see what Stephanie's opinion of it is, okay? Also, uh, just we want to remind you, we are viewer supported. Uh, we'll put the 800 number up and the address. If you like to use your credit card, use the 800 number. And if you would like to send a check, uh, the address is there for you. It's uh, so important to support the ministries that uh, the Lord lays on your heart. That's all we ask, really. So for you who have supported us through, your, through the years, we thank you so much. We appreciate you. And some of you have really been faithful year after year, month after month after month. And um, we just thank you so much. So we do appreciate our uh, viewers. So I, much. And this lady who, because uh, we send thank you letters. And uh, I signed a thank you letter year after year after year, month after month. And I got a letter from her mom, from her daughter, and she's 98 now. Mm. And um, she wanted a picture because she's having a hard time remembering. She says, want a picture of things she enjoyed. Aww. And see if and the, you were in Home remember. Keepers one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How sweet. So we, we really love you, especially when we get attached to you like that over the years. Okay, what okay, did you so do? Okay, so I have chicken breasts, okay? I, I cooked two of them, but I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay, and you get to pound these? That's yes. so much fun. Yes, yes. So we're just going to... Do you pretend this is someone you don't care about? I don't even want to admit that. <laughs> I'm not going to admit who it was, but I think you have a good idea. <laughs> no, I just got to figure out which one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we had a chicken breast. We cut it in half crosswise because mm -hmm. you don't want a thick old chicken breast. And then you put it between the wax paper and you pound it. And then you put a little bit of salt. You know, I really do love capers. A little bit of pepper. They're... I don't know. There's something about their salt. I'm so excited chicken. about trying this because you hear chicken piccata and you think, no, I don't oh. want to make that. This is the easiest chicken piccata ever. Yeah. I promise you. And I would make this at home. And I'm I'm down to cooking simple at home. So I just have plain flour here. A lot of times you just cook for you and your husband. That's right? it. Yep. So I have plain flour, dredged it through the flour, mm -hmm. put it in the hot pan with oil. Thank you. And. And I'm going to just brown each side. You don't have to cook it all the way through because you stick it in the oven at the end. Get um, okay. all your frustrations out. Yes, right here. Mm. Uh -huh. And that way you won't hurt anyone. Well, I make no promises, but that helped. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that flour will give it a little bit of thickening. A little bit, and it helps the, each side to brown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so why don't we move ahead with these two? Well, I can't. Because I had, I need the pan. <laughs> oh, you, oh, that's right. So it'll just, it'll pan. just be a minute. I'm just browning each side. Uh huh. A little bit. I and I won't even do it as much as I need to. Uh huh. Because, like she said, it does go in the oven later and right. gives those flavors such a wonderful opportunity to mingle. Right. I'll tell you what I have. I have a cup of chicken broth. Mm -hmm. I have three tablespoons of capers. Mm -hmm. Three tablespoons of lemon juice and three tablespoons of butter. That's it. So easy. It's not complicated. Oh my gosh, so easy. Guess where I'm going tomorrow, hopefully. 
Oh, She's going to go see her parents again. I'm going to go see my folks in Tennessee. As she long as the weather allows me, because right now they're having storms up through Georgia and Tennessee. Mm -hmm. and it, so I'm just praying that the roads are clear at 2 a.m. because that's when I leave tomorrow morning. I got a text from my daughter-in-law. They got three inches of snow in Montgomery, Alabama. I bet my great grandkids are out of their it's minds. Crazy. Okay, I'm just that's that's yeah. gonna be it. Yeah, you want you want to brown it a little bit more like these mm -hmm. other ones I did, but again, they cook in the oven, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cup of chicken broth. I love this. Oh, so you heat all that together I ahead of time. This. Also, we've cooked up a few needle, ne needles here. Needles. We eat a lot of we needles. We do needles. Sometimes people like noodles. Capers. And um, then you just kind of rest the chicken on top of those. Lemon juice. We're going to let that heat up. And then we're going to put the butter in one tablespoon at a time. And we're going to whisk it. Is that it. what they tell you to do? Yes. Put it in, and then we w just w to be able to whisk it up and make it smooth. Then you pour the sauce over, over the this. chicken. And you throw it in the oven. It smells divine. Mm. How easy was that? I am so anxious for you to taste Very it. Very few ingredients, and everything was three tablespoons. So, uh huh. And you want? I think you want to pound those breasts, you know, pretty thin. Yeah. I mean, I I went really thin this morning. Uh huh. I'm just gonna cut off a little slice for you. Yes, please. Because I couldn't wait. I I got <laughs> all excited. I know somebody was upset at you. I won't say who. No, I, we wouldn't say who. Mm -hmm. That is so tender mm -hmm. and so tasty. Mm -hmm. Oh my you God! You see how easy that was? Chicken piccata. I mean, you tell your family you made them chicken piccata. They're gonna think you care, okay? <laughs> they're gonna <laughs> think you went to gourmet cooking school. Yes, That's they're gonna, what they're think, gonna think, think that you put so <clears throat> much effort into it. And she is still putting the butter in, and uh, that sauce. That sauce is beautiful, and it's amazing. Your, your chicken is basically cooked when you put it in here. The Oven just kind of uh, well, picks it up. Yeah, ours wasn't, but so yeah, we'll put this, this in a little bit longer. Yeah, but, yeah. So, but um, I so will say good. this. I'm kind of planning a, a luncheon maybe for some friends. I, this is what I'm going to fix. Yeah, I, I, I'll be waiting for my invitation. Oh, uh, you, no. you, you are on the list. <laughs> You're on the list. So I, if you want this, this it's called Easy Chicken Piccata. And uh, the information is going to come up on your screen as to how you can get it. And... Uh, uh, one out of ten, I give it a twelve. Oh, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. So good. So pay attention to that, and then you'll meet uh, my wonderful guests, talented guests, unusual guests, lady contractor. Love she'll it. like that. Girl power. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, she'll be here, and I think you're going to really enjoy what she has to say. So don't go anywhere. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Lori, welcome to Home Keepers. Thank you so much. You've written a very thoughtful book, um, How He Loves Us. I want to go into your background a little bit, though. Sure. Uh, you're the founder of um, Out of Ashes Ministries. Can you explain that to us? Yes. Uh, we founded Out of Ashes Ministries after a period of time where I was working for several years with women coming out of prostitution, prison, addiction, domestic violence, human trafficking, just really um, difficult life situations. And mm -hmm. we saw a need to have a teaching ministry. And um, this is something that the Lord's really opened doors for. And uh, I began to be invited in to teach and speak in different churches and organizations. And that's really what our ministry is focused on is helping women to have the knowledge and and the confidence through the Holy Spirit to go out and love on and reach other women in their communities that can be often difficult to reach. Boy, that list that you gave us, that's, uh, I think the Holy Spirit would have to draw you there. I've often said if the Lord, you know, just lined up all the ministries, you might not have chosen that one. That's a tough one. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but what stuck out to me was you want to bring them to the Lord and you want to love them, but then you got to teach them. Jesus was a teacher. Yes. And until they know the word um, and learn how to apply it, 
they're very likely to go back to the life uh, where you found them. That's exactly right. And what we would see so often were women who didn't know how to be loved uh, in a way that was good and, and righteous and honorable, mm -hmm. and they saw themselves as so unworthy and so unlovable. And so we wanted them to know how they are accepted and loved in Christ, exactly where they are, and, uh, and then begin to teach them His Word and, and what He hopes for and longs for, for them and their purpose and calling and destiny. But what I found so often was that there were women in our community who wanted to have that outreach potential, who wanted to go out and do good do and something. to serve, but they just didn't know how to do it. And they didn't know how to feel confident loving women who maybe didn't look so lovable. And so I hope that through what we're doing, we're helping women to know uh, that they can reach anyone. Mm -hmm. We're going to put your website on the screen. We're going to leave it up there. Uh, so that people can learn more about what you're doing. Was there anything in your own life that directed you to to these ladies? Absolutely, and and ultimately it was because uh, God opened that door. Mm -hmm. I, I, and what you said earlier, I would not have uh, made that decision and selected yeah. those women to go and work with. But I grew up in a very difficult situation. My biological father uh, suffered from schizophrenia. Uh, he was very mentally unbalanced and very abusive. And so uh, of all of the things that I could share with you that he um, did, uh, through his, his violent rage, there was one incident in particular that really had a lasting effect on me. And when I was a very young girl, he was feeding me with a fork and he began stabbing me in the back of the throat over and over until I got sick. Back of the throat? Mm -hmm. And so um, when that happened, I, I began to have uh, a struggle with panic attacks and anxiety. And I was very young. I didn't know that that was what was happening. And and so as I got older, some other things were going on in our household. And it was just a household that really suffered from mental illness, alcoholism, abuse, all kinds of things. Mm. And so I was so used to this darkness, but it was consuming me. And in the struggle from anxiety, as I got older, I reverted back to that incident with my father. And um, I became just hypersensitive and, and so afraid of getting sick. And so I began to starve myself in an attempt not to get sick. And in that, I became anorexic for 16 years. And in that period of time, I met a man who led me down a road that was the most horrific, vile sexual sin. And, um, and it nearly destroyed me. And so uh, I, I had met and known God, surrendered my life to Him at 13. But by the time I hit 16, everyone who were the closest people to me were pagans and Wiccans, witches and warlocks, felons, thieves, strippers. Those were my closest friends. And so in the area of what I was surrounding myself with, I got pulled down a path just further and further away from Christ. And I knew that I belonged to Him and I was stepping in places I shouldn't be, but I didn't know how to pull back from that because all I knew yeah. at home and outside of home was darkness. And... Um, it, it was a really long walk back to restoration from that place that I was in. But certainly in that walk, I believe that the Lord prepared me to know how to see potential oh, in people wow. and how to love them and, and, um, and how to help others know how to love. I had in my notes here uh, something that jumped out from my preparation that you said that you have to be broken before you can be restored. You just explained it. Yes, yes. yes. Well, uh, that's how God turns things around for His kingdom yeah. and for His glory. And um, I'm so thankful for the ministry you have. Now, uh, the book that uh, you wrote is um, it's really different because it has a lot of information, but also uh, you pull women from the Bible yes. to use as examples. And was it hard to choose a few <laughs> because there's a lot of women in the Bible. There are, and it was hard to choose. The primary focus of the book, and let me say this as well, when I was teaching the women coming out of those different life situations, um, I wanted them to understand the affections of God and how God feels about them. I wanted them to know that um, His love can heal anything, and it can heal any lie that you know resides inside of our head and heart. And if they could understand how God sees them, then they would be more motivated to come out of that. So the focus of the book was really, first and foremost, it was written for them. I wrote this as a Bible study for them. We used to print it out on pages every week and pass it out to the group. Um, but 
the focus is the Song of Solomon and the journey of the Shulamite. And what I wanted was to see different women of the Bible and their story paralleled with each chapter of Song of Solomon so that we could see um, maybe from an immature stage in life where Eve was um, down to the Proverbs 31 woman, which is the last chapter paired with chapter 8 of Song of Solomon, because we're watching yeah. the Shulamite progress in her maturing with her king. And that's the same thing we're seeing in uh, the timeline of these ladies that were chosen for each chapter. Well, I, I imagine it was a little bit hard to... I, now, you have uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Yes. Uh, how do you use her in comparison to the Song of Solomon? Well, there's really the three Marys in there. And um, what we are watching is what it means to surrender fully. And I believe that chapter, and the name of that chapter, chapter is Surrender Over Service. And it's, it's to remind us that we're to walk in obedience more than we're to busy ourselves with serving. Even in good places in ministry, we can become so wrapped up in the doing that we forget the surrendering. And so that, that focus of that chapter is really to remind us that, you know, more than anything, God longs for us to come before Him and just to surrender everything that we are, every moment that we have, every skill that, that we can give um, before Him, even more important than the doing. It's, um, it's interesting how um, everything in the Scripture fits together yes. and one thing complements another. Uh, I failed to mention we started out, and I want the audience to know that you have been and are still involved as a general <laughs> contractor building buildings. Um, I've never seen such a beautiful contractor, I'll say Thank that. You. And how in the world did you get into it? <laughs> Um, I got into it because my stepfather told me that I wasn't capable of doing it. That's, That's really it. it I did it to <laughs> prove him wrong. That was the rebellion of my youth. Uh, I had purchased my first home at 18, and really it was because I was so motivated to get out of the living situation I was in. Mm -hmm. And I rented the house out. The renters destroyed it, and so I was on a mission to yeah. fix this house, and he told me I couldn't do it. So mm -hmm. I did it just to prove him wrong. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations. So you have this contractor's license, yes. and... Um, you're not quite as involved as you have been the past, right? In, That's in right. I have spent 21 years in construction and worked tool belt on in the trades. And, and, um, and I've loved every minute of it. I'm so passionate about it. But God used that to help me understand a parallel in restoration because I, coming out of what I came out of, you have to understand that I didn't love people so easily in those years. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of hatred and bitterness in me. And so as I developed my love for construction and restoration primarily, because mm -hmm. I love seeing buildings that need to be gutted and redone. And uh, I was such a visionary with that. And so he helped me to learn uh, what that process looks like uh, in order to, to be restored. And then began a walk with me where I saw it in women, saw the potential well, I, and, and yeah, that that is an interesting uh, parallel. What is? I'm sure that most of the people working for you for, were men. Yes. <laughs> uh, is that a little tough to navigate? Because we think of construction workers, they're tough guys. That's right. And absolutely, it's tough to navigate, uh, especially for a woman. There was, you know, I think that there's some things that I have to deal with that maybe men don't, where I have to show that I am capable of this, that I that I understand the skill set, that I have the skill set, but also to have balance and respect as well, because I think that's so important. I'm not going out there to prove a point and to prove no. someone else wrong, but uh, instead, just to show that, you know, we're here together, we have the same goal, and, and let me honor you and how you work, and also expect the same kind of respect and honor in my position. Do you know how to do all the hands-on stuff? Yes. Like absolutely. a roof and, and a... Yes. Yes, I've done roofing and carpentry. <laughs> carpentry is my favorite. Uh, carpentry and tile are my two highest skill sets in the industry, yes. Oh, congratulations <laughs> to you. Okay, let's get back to the book. Right. Uh, the, the website is on the screen, and you can get the book through the website. Also, I'm sure Amazon and Barnes and & Noble yes. and all this. Name is How He Loves Us, and so wonderful that the whole book came to fruition because of the women that you have dealt with that come from just yes. the dregs of society. Yes. And, um the well, word restoration is is so important. They're they're not changed. Over, their their soul might be changed in their destination, but there's a lot more to it. There that. is so much more, and I wanted them to see that their future had potential. It didn't matter what their past looked mm -hmm. like. I was a living, breathing story of that, and uh, and it was so incredible to watch them as we would go through each chapter, and they would develop in their understanding of God's love through the Shulamite. 
I would watch them jump up and down in their chair. I mean, just bounce in their seats. They were so excited to understand how deeply they were loved by God. And it was just really incredible. And I want to honor Pastor Ryan Wyatt because I had done a workshop with him on the Song of Solomon, which is what opened this door for mm -hmm. me. And I was captivated. And where is he? He is with Fuse Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, and it was just an incredible, incredible time of learning for me. And I took that, uh, the, the content of what he gave us in that workshop, and I spent three years breaking down the Song of Solomon line by line to understand the original Hebrew and to take a hard look at the poetry and to, to see what that parallel yeah, was. Yeah, because it's a tough book. It is a tough and, book. And uh, there are many viewpoints on it. That's right. I would think the way you did it would probably be the right way to do it. Just <laughs> break it down through the, through the original. Yes, script. yes. And that's what I offer in the book is that we get a line by line look at what each of these things mean in the allegory of the poetry of the Song of Solomon. But I think it's so important because, you know, the word tells us that marriage is this beautiful reflection of the relationship between Christ and his church. Mm -hmm. And then we've got one book of the Bible, the Song of Solomon, that really focuses on marriage. So why aren't we looking at it as, right. you know, how does this relate between Christ I think Christ it's too hard for some people yes. to look at. They didn't, uh, you know, put the elbow grease in it like, <laughs> right. like you did. Uh, of all these, I'm, I'm just going to list some of them. She's Mary, mother of Jesus, Mary of Bethany. Uh, Mary of Bethany, um, I probably relate a little bit more to Martha. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I was a pastor's wife, you know, and, and uh, I can't be too hard on Martha. Boy, the church would be awful without them. <laughs> yes, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Yes. So I, I love both of them. They both just need to be tweaked a little bit. That's right. And Jesus was All so good us. at that. Yes. He was so good at seeing the good part. Okay, and uh, Mary Magdalene, Deborah, Esther, Ruth, and the Proverbs woman. I love the Proverbs woman. She is me too. And she uh, makes me very weary. <laughs> she makes <laughs> me <know>. tired. <laughs> but um, she... To me, she kind of epitomizes what women in America are looking for because she was so accomplished. But she put her home first and yes. children, her husband. But she was a businesswoman. She was, uh, she knew apparently how to organize her time, which I think you do from what I've gathered. But um, do you have a favorite woman that you highlighted? Well, it's so, it's so funny because out of all of them um, that the chapters are paralleled with, my favorite is by far the Shulamite. Mm -hmm. But I love the Proverbs 31 woman as well because um, I was really disappointed when I began studying deeply the lives of each of these women for the book because I was uh, reading some some content uh, just from some different women in the Christian faith who struggled with the Proverbs 31 woman. They thought that it was outdated. It, it didn't pertain to You're us kidding. today and that was so disappointing for me because you know in in the gifts of the spirit I'm sorry, in the fruit of the Spirit, everything is something that we should be aiming toward. It's a measuring stick for us to know, mm -hmm. you know, where, where do I need to be working, Lord? Help me, show me those places, and, and where am I, am I strong? And show me how to use those strengths mm -hmm. for you. And so I think that it's so immature to discount uh, the traits of the Proverbs 31 woman because those are things that we should be striving for. Maybe the radical feminists don't <laughs> like her. <laughs> right, and that can be a struggle, really. And, and I think uh, we're paying today for some of that radical feminist movement. There were some good things yes. in it. I think equal pay for the equal work. I, sure. A lot of those things, nothing wrong with that. But also, I felt a lot of times in some of those instances, the glue that held them together was their hatred of men. Yes. And that's, <clears throat> that's not very productive at all because God has specific assignments for male and female. That's right. And when you stay in those, you have a good society. That's exactly right. But uh, if you don't, you have what we've got right now. Yes, and I think in some ways it's still spiraling out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be sensitive to that, especially in the career that I carried for over 20 years because I certainly could have, you know, put my boot down <laughs> <laughs> and, and decided that I was here to make a statement. But that's not what I was here for. What, no. I, what I was there doing was something that I loved, but I wanted to honor God in that. And, um, and, it, and you're so right in that, you know, we are... Uh, equal in essence, but different in function, male and female. And mm -hmm. it's so important to understand that God has placed us in a role for a reason. And if we can honor that and, and look for a purpose in it, then we are going to come out way ahead than trying to yeah. make a feminist statement. And it works. I mean, it produces good children yes. who grow up to be good adults and good citizens and all. You can't improve on 
on God's way of doing things at no, all. No, no. Well, we're getting close to being out of time, but I've just got to say, what a trophy of God's grace you are. Because I almost have visions of, of the way you were abused. I've never heard of stabbing somebody with a fork yeah. in their throat. Um, but what God can take and use and make something beautiful, as Gloria Gaither wrote, something beautiful, uh, that line says, all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. Yes. But he made something beautiful of my life. You're that. Yes. You are that. And I'm so, so thankful to him for it. And I remember the first time that um, he called me to speak you know, publicly and, and to share my testimony. I had not done it before. And it was in a place called the YWCA where they housed 50 or more domestic violence victims. And so there were probably workers and mentors, maybe 75 people there. And, and I just thought, I can't do this. I cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And I was sure I wasn't going to make it through. And I was so moved at the end of it to have so many women come up to me afterward Praise and God. say, Lori, because, because you got through that, I know that I can too. Yeah. And it overwhelmed me to think that he allowed me to walk through what I've walked that through is. just to stand before others. And, and it say, brings you out you. completely whole. We are out of time, but I hope you got the website. Uh, she is a speaker. She would be great in your church. And I'm sure you can tell that. But you stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Wow. You know, Christian television brings you these kinds of testimonies, testimonies to the power of God, Anyone who was abused as a child, like my guest, uh, the road ahead is quite predictable unless Jesus comes onto the scene. And we have those scenes in the scripture, in the gospels, but we also have them today. Living, breathing people, a young girl whose, whose father actually would stab the back of her throat while he was feeding her, that is horrible but then you come through all of that and down the road you meet Jesus and he makes it all right he makes it all new he can even promote that forgiveness that needs to come to make you completely whole so my friend whatever your background is or whatever you're going through right now you bring Jesus on the scene and it can make everything different please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper God bless you if you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.